Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. So this is like the 26th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Directed by John Watts. Written by Chris McKenna, Eric Somers. And produced by Kevin Feige. I think that's how you say his name. Starring Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, whatever the fuck his name is. So right off the bat, I'll give my impression of the movie. I think, again, because of things that are going on in my life, it could be impacting my experience with the movie. But I'm going to say it's a good movie. A little confusing, and it's not the story itself, but where it was going emotionally and you know character driven wise and i think there's um a big audience for this i was captivated at some points there were so many good nerdy comic book spider-man moments with really great cameo or guest stars or co-actors because it's not really just short little things and I'm going to come away enjoying the movie. My experience, though, I'm just not in the right frame of mind type thing. Um, again, this could be just a combination of, you know, where I am in my life and working so hard and doing all this shit. We'll see how a second viewing would be of the movie. But when you take it as an arc, uh, in, in that case, I'm a little... Um, I don't know, not really disappointed. I just didn't feel the rhythm was right when I decided to do certain things, like when they're going to bring in the plot twist here, when they're going to decide to do this, and it just felt a little bit out of control. But, and like I said, there's so many moments I'm smiling, I want to cry, there's a real... Um, affinity for certain moments in the movie and I think that's kind of elevated for me as um, one of the Spider-Man movies and when I mean by one of these I mean the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies I'm not the biggest fan of the connection with Tony Stark and the technology it just kind of draws me all the time and it's not overdone here but it does continue the theme, and maybe because of the way the movie ends, it will almost write itself. And in this, I don't give too many plots and spoilers and whatever. I'm just going to ramble about, you know, how I feel about the movie and certain aspects of it. But I guess as a whole, it's, it's enjoyable. There's some heartfelt moments that are really... Um, emotional and they uh hit you in the right feels but i just feel i don't know sometimes it's a little too late to do this and a little too much invested in what you had before are you trying to course correct are you um you know are there dealings behind the scenes between marvel and sony and it just feels a little weird but again i love seeing the other characters come into the movie, their impact on this Spider-Man, I thought it was really good. I can't help it. The way they use the, well, I don't know, Sinister Six, uh, the villains, was pretty cool. I did like um, the aspects of the villains from the other movies having a real big impact on what happens here. And I thought that was really good. I did find some of the betrayal stuff a little you know eye rolling here and there but you no know, movie's gonna have that and like i said the the major theme i just think is misplaced it's just a little too late for the impact this is looking for you should have maybe done this in the first movie <laughs> it, it, maybe not the story itself but the the emotional beats that it takes uh the transition between action and drama and 
what they're going to make you feel and when you feel it and what motivates the hero, the character, the hero's journey and writing the terms. It just feels a little too late. And, it, you know, you're looking at the world today with the pandemic and, uh, you know, coming back in waves, this and that, and this political stuff and conspiracy stuff. The movie made a lot of money. It's grossing. It's not a bad movie. It's just, I think, my mindset of um, just analyzing it in a different way. Just, you know, maybe a little bit uh, of the way, you know, the way you wake up today and what's going on in your life. I do really appreciate what they tried to do you've got a major section with dr strange that's not a major spoiler he's all over the promotions and again a great opening or lead-in for his movie because it stems from there uh, from what happens in this movie you can tell but i'm still a little confused on certain aspects of the friends, the spell that's going on, and how it's going to affect things. And then the spell is changed, and, and it just, I don't know, it just, it's a little clunky, maybe, but... Wow, to see the villains come back, to see the other characters interact with him, just was a joy. It was cartoon Spider-Man to me, which they should have bring in everybody. Why not bring in Miles Morales and everybody else, and... I don't know, but, you know, what's that, uh, what's that, uh, there's a little, um, Spider-Man character, he's a pig, uh, Peter Parker, I think his name is, it's like a fun thing they do in the comics, and he's been in tons of multiversal stories, because these comic books go deeper than even this movie, I mean, there were like arcs in some of these cartoons where all these characters cross over, oh, you got the latest uh spider-man miles morales the cartoon which hints at things like this and it is uh the ramifications of the second movie with mysterio revealing his identity but again i just feel like this is a clunky end of his trilogy it just um works well in its own movie like this would have been a great opening movie oh, of course you'd have to change things but so it's a mixed bag for me i think it's going to be viewed well i think people are going to like it a lot um i'd be surprised if it gets like negative reviews and i've just watched the movie so it's not like a um i've got enough time or had enough time to go looking at anything basically and i tried to stay away from things in general although because work is you know so I've been just trying to work my ass off that um, I haven't had time for a lot of things and I never got to do even even more than one podcast a week now, which is also bothering me. But I, I, I know I think I'm going to look back and watch this movie again and enjoy it. I still think I'm going to have these little nitpick problems, if you want to call them part of, you know, part of the issue I have. But I might look on it on another day where I wake up in a better mood and just appreciate for what they tried to do. You're getting Doctor Strange involved in his um, universe spanning powers, a multiversal, and in a sense, there's enough humor in it that's not overboard. It's done well. I liked it. Although, like I said, the first 20 minutes a little scary. I wasn't into it too much, but. It kind of writes itself in, in, in a proper way, I guess, if there's any way to describe that. But there's a lot of connections to the other worlds that was really spot on. I thought they handled it well. And the ending's just a little weird to me. And that's like a spoiler thing because I'm talking about a particular end scene. And I'm really... I'm really surprised that that's how they chose to do it, and it kind of irks me a little bit, like, you know, I guess I'll say, you know, I'll put a spoiler alert, so, spoiler alert, this is, well, you probably fuck us up listening after I said, this is a Deadly Dixon channel, um, alright, so, towards the end of the movie, you're given a 
couple of end cut scenes, whatever you call them, end credit scenes and after credit scenes. And I wasn't surprised and didn't bother me about the Doctor Strange lead in because that's really important and you can feel the skeleton, the structure was there in this movie, obviously. It was the Venom thing that was like, like what are you trying to do here? And then he leaves a little bit behind. It's just like, I'm going to admit, this is like stupid to me. You're not going to combine their worlds, I guess. Or, see, I guess you could do, he leaves part of the goo, the symbiote here, he bonds with this Peter, or whatever. Who knows what they'll, give the, what they'll do here, if they even continue it. But it was just that scene where Eddie Brock's talking at the bar, and he's trying to understand what's going on in his universe, because he was pulled here. Why is he pulled here? Wouldn't it have been the Eddie Brock from... Because I thought the spell had to do with knowing Peter Parker was Spider-Man. So why was Eddie Brock pulled here? I think that was the crux of it. Now, maybe I'm missing something because I've watched the first Venom movie, not the second one. Maybe I'm missing something, so I'll reserve judgment there. But basically, Eddie Brock's there at the bar, talking blah, blah, blah. And then, I guess, if you time it with everything, when everybody gets sent back and everything's corrected, Eddie Brock gets sent back. That's, the, you know, the uh, new Venom. But it leaves behind a piece of goo. I just feel it was like a little cheap, a little whatever. Like, why you bother? But in that case, um, I guess that's it for real spoilers. Um, again, uh, I, I, I look at the movie and I've always been a little bothered by the connection to, you know, um, Tony Stark and the technology. Although I love Spider-Man and the Avengers movies. I think it works well. I just made it went in a different direction with his solo movies. This one might be riding the ship at the end, since I just said spoilers, where, you know, there's no remembering of Peter Parker or Spider-Man. That's a little confusing also, because if you knew Aunt May, you didn't know she had a nephew, Peter? Now, there's a part at the end with Happy. Again, I get it. There's storylines, whatever. Maybe I'm not focusing properly and all my cognitive functions aren't, you know, at peak performance. But I'm going to say a lot of people are going to really like this movie. I think it's going to get a good fan reaction. It did so many things that you would want in a multiversal movie where you're seeing different characters that are the same in a way it's um you know they did the meme thing it's like you know you're gonna smile and i'm a comic book fan big spider-man fan i don't see it being a major issue with most people like the things i might find and nitpick about like with fucking ned leads and the ring and i i, I thought they were gonna Look okay, at this. There's a part where the, the friend, the best friend Ned Leeds, is um, opening portals. And I thought it was going to be revealed that it was Doctor Strange the whole time trying to help from where he was trapped. No. It's just, it's not. And it's the ring that was on his finger, and his family said he had a little magic in him. And. Now, he is a character that they did do a little, little twisty thing where they reveal something, they do a little tongue-in-cheek, where the character that leads, if I'm correct, turns into the Hobgoblin in, in the uh, comics, in some iteration, maybe I'm wrong, but, and he becomes like a uh, Green Goblin, but yellow, and did you notice he was wearing a yellow and something jacket? And they even made a, you know, uh, a reference to it that um a point the other one of the spiders was trying to make to Ned and Ned comes over and says, you know, I promise I won't betray you and turn into a villain, but 
I don't know. I think a lot of people are going to like the movie that are even into Spider-Man, for sure. As a general Marvel Cinematic Universe experience, I think it does its job. Ties it in. Does it well. Doctor Strange is uh, really cool to see around Spider-Man. And, um... I guess that's really it. Uh, I think my... Feelings, my attitude towards it is biased in that sense, but I'm torn on both sides. It's like I'm in a bad fucking mood, I'm whatever, I'm drained, tired, and there's the little kid in me who's geeking out because I'm watching more than one Spider Man and I kind of like them all in a way. Some aspects, although I will rank them and say which one I like best, there's big uh emotional roller coaster here and there and i think it's gonna work on the whole for me i'm a little in a weird place here when it comes to this but that's what every experience now although i gotta admit watching i did my podcast on the wheel of time and there wasn't much that i found nitpicking that or i found myself well i you know you know like i said it's day to day right it, one day you're just riding high, doing well, and the next day it's just um, bullshit. But pretty good movie. Gonna hit the right spots for a lot of people. And like I said, I doubt I would hear a lot of negative things about the movie. Certain aspects of it, sure, like you know, things you might disagree with, but give it a shot i think it's it fits in with the marvel cinematic universe it might even correct some things at the end for the next one that i had issues with so this could be a big win-win i'll look back on this and go oh you know i was just um in a shitty mood you know you know how that works right i guess so i guess my ending of this rambling mess would be watch spider-man no way home if you've watched the first two and you like them i think you're really gonna like this one there's maybe a little bit of uh heartbreaking moments where you're gonna be disappointed but i you know i see what they were going they were trying to do and if you're just somebody who doesn't really get an interest in this is this gonna kick off the spider-man would this be the movie to pick to get into the movie m multiverse or whatever the fuck Probably not, but if you're a fan of the other Spider-Man movies and there's aspects of them you like, I think you might enjoy this. I think you might really see that they put effort into giving respect and paying homage to, you know, whatever many years when it started with uh, Sam Raimi and I know it didn't start, start there, but, you know, the movie Cinematic Universe of Spider-Man, which I love those movies, by the way. Anyway, I guess I'll end here. Watch Spider-Man, No Way Home. I'll talk to you all later. Till next time.